All right, you play Madden and you're looking to make some extra money at the same time, so why not make extra money while playing Madden? Now, this actually kind of encompasses a lot of just video games as a whole of different ways you can make money in video games. We're talking about some very obvious ones and then some very more obscure ones. So make sure you watch this to the end because there is some pretty... Th this is all things that I did to make money. Um, I was able to start doing this at 17 uh, and make a little bit of side money back when I was 17 and had no... B I wasn't good at the game, really. Um, I was above average, but I wasn't... You know, I wasn't even a top 500 player in the world. Uh, I had no following, no no streaming support, no YouTube, no anything. I was able to make an okay amount of money. And then this is, I've used all of these things to build up to the point where I am now, where I'm able to do this full time. I don't make a ton of money, but I am able to play Madden as a full time living. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. So uh, this is going to be a breakdown of all those things. All right, boys. The first and foremost thing I do got to say, though, is you have to provide some sort of value. If you... This goes for literally everything. I'm so tired of people just bullshitting around and just saying, well, just, you know, if you have to provide some sort of value, that's why I hate gambling as some people pretend to um, be able to make money gambling. There's very few people who actually can. And a lot of the people who are doing that are people who just want to make money without providing any sort of value, without solving any problem, without... If you want to make actual money and consistent money in the world, this goes for everything. You have to provide some sort of value. You have to solve some sort of problem. You have to help somebody, et cetera, et cetera. So some of these things do involve you providing value. You have to, all right? Let's go into number one. This is obviously the most lucrative is the MCS, okay? Madden Championship Series. This is professional Madden. Back when I started, uh, there was a tournament called Club Championships, which would pay out $2,500 all the way to top 124. That was a lot. Now you won't get any money from until top 16. This is way less lucrative now than it used to be, or way less realistic. Um, but it is probably the main way I see most people thinking that they're going to make actual money from this is through the MCS. Again, used to be more, used to make more sense. Still a possibility. It's something that I, it's cool to work towards while grinding other things, in my opinion. That's kind of how I feel about MCS. That's how I treat the MCS now. Uh, I think it's cool to work towards, but my other, uh, so many other things are my main focus compared to where the MCS lies on the totem pole. Uh, totem pole. But MCS is one of them. Next thing, another obvious one is streaming. Let's say, for example, this, this is a great one. Let's say, for example, you are trying to qualify for an MCS tournament, right? Your goal is, I'm going to become a pro man player. I'm going to qualify for the MCS. If you have to play 20 games to qualify for the MCS, you have two options. One, play those games alone in your bedroom with, you know, nobody else seeing, or boot up a stream that is the easiest way to get into streaming is to stream yourself playing games or doing something that you already have to do all right that's how i got into streaming i would stream my draft champions games uh from madden 20 which i had to play to qualify for a pro tournament back then i just started streaming come like i either i do this by myself or i stream and maybe i make a little bit of extra money from streaming now immediately all of these will make you very little money at first for a very long time. It took me years to be able to even consider doing Madden as a full-time thing. And I had full-time jobs or I was going to school full-time or both while I was grinding a lot of these things. So also keep in mind, it's not an overnight thing. It takes a lot of time. A lot of these though are cool things that you could build up a little bit of side money while you play a game that you enjoy. Again, it goes for all video games. So that's streaming. Uh, the next thing we're just gonna go immediately into is YouTube. Very self-explanatory. Um, if you enjoy making videos, you, got a decent, you don't need a decent personality. If you enjoy making videos, if you like the idea of being on camera, why not try and make a YouTube video? Um, just something to consider. Something that if you're, say you're a really good Madden player, you go 24 and 1 in weekly consistently, why not spend five hours every week, stream those, stream those weekly games, right? Then spend five hours just cutting them up and make little montages, put them on YouTube. See how they do. Might be able to make a couple extra bucks. Maybe you don't. You wasted five, ten hours of your time. It's your time's not that valuable. My time's not that valuable. You know what I'm saying? Just something to consider. Now we're gonna go into things that are a little bit more obscure and take a little bit more, not even take more, just a little bit more obscure and aren't as glamorous as those first three. Money games. A lot of people get this wrong. I see a lot of people who, a lot of people play money games, but they try playing up in skill level or they play at the same skill level. All right. I'm gonna give you a secret. You want to play people that are worse than you in money games. Why? Because you're trying to make money. The amount of people I see win $20 in a money game and then go play Clef the God or Dreeny or Kiv or Wesley with that $20, it's like, okay, like, 
Good job, dude. You you wait. And you, you've now just you broke it even. Good job. You just spent two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, and just broke even. Don't get me wrong. There's some value to playing money games because people are better than you because it can help you get better at the game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you want to play people who are worse than you. There's no reason to play people who are better than you for money if you're trying to make money. You know, if you don't, there's other reason you can. But if you're trying to make money, play people who are worse than you. This is the dumbest thing ever. I see all the time. Oh, I'll play Dreenies for twenty. Dreeny, I'll play Dreeny Joka, the best man player in the world, arguably for twenty fives. Okay, you just don't like money. That's fine. That's okay not to, but you know what I'm saying? It's just dumb. A good way is to find group chats that people play money games in. Um, there's Twitch streamers who will play money games. There's YouTubers who play money games. Uh, there's Facebook groups that play money games, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of ways to play. When I was probably a top 500 per, uh, player in the world, my Siri just turned on. Um, when I was a top like 500 player in the world. Now I'm like a top 50. Um, I would play people who were a top thousand player in the world who weren't even really even involved in competitive Madden like that because I knew Okay, Kenny if you play somebody who's also a competitive Madden player Especially at this time you're probably gonna either lose money or at the best break even Why would I do that my time like I'm trying to make money here. I'm gonna play people who are worse That's uh, that's and it sounds so obvious, but I see so many people make the mistake just Take that for what it is. On the note of money games, we're gonna go into CFMs, money CFMs, okay? The cool thing with CFMs is that, well, I guess it's not really the cool thing. You can find CFMs that are $10, $20 buy-ins um, that don't have great Madden players in them, okay? I see another mistake where everyone wants to, everyone watches K-Mac who uh, is in these huge CFMs uh, with all the pro players like man i want to be in that and it's a cool ass experience i'm not talking about experiences right now i'm talking about making money it is a cool ass experience to be, to be in a cfm with a bunch of pro players but you're not gonna make any money from that you know what i mean you're probably not gonna if you do awesome but you know what i'm saying and i see even really good players you know join these tournaments or these cfms with other awesome players and it's like well a lot of you guys aren't gonna make any money so you're gonna spend a whole 17 week season which, you know, is 17 games, 16 games, whatever. Um, and, you know, it's going to take, uh, along with team building, along with everything, it's going to be 30, 40 hours of your time, probably, to break even or lose money. It's like, ooh, don't do that. There's better ways to spend your time. So, again, with the same thing with the money games, you want to join CFMs full of players who are worse than you. Um, and at first, you can... I remember when I first started, I was able to find CFMs that were, like, $5 to get into and like a hundred dollar pot or something like that. You know what I mean? Nothing crazy. Um, that's a good way to start. Again, dude, we're not talking about making thousands of dollars right off the bat. We're talking about how do you make hundred dollars a month, $50 a month, you know, a couple of dollars a day. I'm being serious. This is how you start. If you're a big baller, this video is probably not for you anyways. Um, I'm talking about how I got started in this um, and what I did. And if you're trying to follow any sort of path, you'll make any sort of money. Go, go kind of that route, all right? So let's kind of CFM, same idea. You want to get into these CFMs. Uh, you can find them on Facebook, Google, whatever, whatever. Uh, we're going to go right from CFM. We're going to talk about turn small tournaments. Same thing. So many people throw these small tournaments that have actual pretty decent prizes that really no great man players are in. So huge opportunity to make some sort of money from that. Huge up. I see them constantly, constantly. All right, so that's just a quick thing with uh, small tournaments. All right, let's go into the next one, eBooks. This is actually a super lucrative one inside of Madden. Uh, this is also be known as like courses in uh, other spaces. We call them courses um, or, you know, uh, strategy guides. eBooks is what they call them in Madden. But teaching people how to get better at the game. Now this, I, I do this right now, obviously with my website, Civil GG, um, and I do this in terms of gameplay. But it could also be done with coins in my opinion. And I know for a fact, if somebody put together a small guide and said, Civil, you do X, Y, and Z, you will make coins. I would do it. Right now, I feel like all the coin places are very sporadic or like very spread out. All the information gets outdated super quickly. All the information's kind of all over the place. Hard for me to keep track of, so I just don't make coins. But I would pay $15 a month for a coin guide that actually made me coins. Um, with this though, it is very important that if you go this route of making a course, and again, this goes for all types of video games and all that, it's not just Madden, but if you go the route of making eBooks, you need to actually be somewhat accredited, all right? Now, do you need to be the best player in the world? No, 
But if you get 15 wins in Weekend League out of 25, 15, you have 15 and 10. The fact of the matter is you're probably not great at the game or really superb enough to be teaching other people how to play the game. And the issue that comes with it, you could be a great marketer and still sell, but it really comes from a customer satisfaction point. I'm a huge advocate of customer satisfaction being the, sa the number one thing, same thing with viewer satisfaction on YouTube, being the number one thing. And so if you suck at something for, or if you're not good at something, it's hard to teach other people how to do it. It's just, it's just hard on yourself. It's not sustainable is the thing. I'm very big on making kind of uh, on, on sustainable income sources. But that is a way, either coins or gameplay. I'm a big advocate for uh, strategy guides around them. And there's a bunch of different ways to do strategy guides, courses, et cetera, et cetera. Coaching is another good one. Um, coaching, uh, you've got to actually be, you got to know your shit. But this goes for some of my more like kind of borderline comp players who uh, watch these videos. Where if you're a borderline comp player, say you're always qualifying for MCS tournaments, you have some final 64s, maybe, um, you know, top 100s, maybe you get ranked, you know, whatever, whatever. Coaching is something that you can do and people will give you money to get them better at the game. It's no different than paying for golf. And you, everybody here probably knows somebody who golfs. A lot of people pay for golf instructors. Golf's a hobby, you pay for a golf instructor to get better. Man's a hobby, people pay for a Madden instructor to get better. It makes sense. It, 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 I'll get some people in real life who like scoff at like, oh, you spending money on to get better at a video game. You spend money to get better at golf, dickhead. Fuck you. Like seriously. Um, but if you're decent at the game, you're good at the game. Again, this is the type of thing where you need to be good at it. Don't, don't be a bullshitter. You do not want to make money in life being a bullshitter. You want to be... You, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not good at the game? Don't coach. Uh, but if you're great at the game, uh, it is an actual very lucrative possibility uh, that I've really yet to see anybody take full advantage of. Even myself, I don't take full advantage of it uh, like I could and or should. Um, but th th that's another great strategy of being able to monetize yourself a little bit inside of Mata. You gotta think, let's say you're an 18-year-old kid. Um, you know, you're 18, let's say you've made a few final 64s of Madden tournaments, maybe a final, couple final uh, top 100s or something. Uh, you're better than the majority of people in Madden. You are, you know what I mean? If you get even if you get 22, 23 wins in Weekend League consistently, 20, it, it, it kind of depends, but you get what I'm saying? Like you're better than the majority of people in Madden. The idea of charging somebody, hey man, an hour of my time, I'll, I'll $25. Give me 25 bucks and I'll spend an hour one-on-one -on -one with you in a voice call. And help you that's $25 um, for one hour of your time across the US that's pretty good that's a pretty good pay per hour and you're playing a freaking video game you know what I mean um, so uh, that's just another thing to consider um, I, it, it yeah team managing building solo grinding this is something this is an issue that I encounter myself along as I know some other streamers and content creators uh, encounter a lot same with pro players is that building a Madden team and Mutt takes a lot of time. Solo grinding, level grinding, just changing theme teams, all that stuff takes a lot of time. I have people who I pay to do it for me. Just because it, it literally comes down to this. My time, is my time better spent um, spending three hours learning a new scheme, preparing for the next tournament, editing a video, recording a video, or is it better spent building a Madden team? No, it's obviously, you know, building, no, no. Sometimes I do build my own team and whatnot, but you can outsource that stuff. So if you're one of those kids, it's a good opportunity to make really easy money and you don't need to be good at the game, good at really anything. You just need to be active. Really, the people I, I uh, who do it for me are people who I just know and who I trust. Um, and I wanna help out usually. They're literally just like kids, usually, um, just cause it just makes sense. Um, there's nothing more to that. It's, it makes sense. How to get into that is a little bit harder, um, obviously, because like for me, I just pick, I know like other, there's other content creators, other streamers who also do the same thing, but it's another source of just, you know, something to kind of be aware of that is something that people, that you could offer your services for, for example. Um, I know for a fact, if a year ago, some, a, a kid DM'd me, and not a kid, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Um, someone DM'd me and said, hey, Sybil, I would, uh, I'd do your solos um, tonight for XYZ amount of money. I'd highly consider it. Um, obviously, 
If it was a totally random person, probably not because I don't want to give them access to my account. So there's obviously issues with that, but you get what I'm saying. Next one, this is a cool one, is commentating tournaments. I used to commentate a ton of tournaments, never for the MCS. It's actually one of my goals is to work with EA and commentate one of their tournaments. Hasn't happened yet, EA. Maybe you're watching. Um, but there's a lot of third-party tournaments going on all the time. And people are hosting them, and the idea of someone's hosting them, and they want it to be seen. So either they're streaming them currently, um, and they might want help commentating them, or they want someone to, they'd be open to the idea of somebody hosting them for them. This is where commentating comes in. Uh, I used to make money, like I said, commentating for people. It's pretty easy, commentating terms. You don't need to be good at the game. You just need to be a little bit knowledgeable of the game, obviously, if you're going to commentate. Uh, there's a bunch of ways. Any third-party tournaments you see... Uh, it's a really easy way to get into it. The way I actually first got into it was hosting my own tournaments um, and then commentating those. I showed that I was capable of doing it and I showed that to some friends who worked for uh, uh, a place that hosted tournaments and I was, excuse me, I was lucky and able to to commentate some of those tournaments which led to more opportunities commentating tournaments. I don't do it anymore currently but it is something that is a good way to make decent extra money. Um, again, just being around a video game and you don't have to be good at the game or own the game even. <laughs> a really cool thing that a lot of people don't do is, and this is for kids out there, high school students, I guess college kids as well, um, is that the scholarship opportunities inside of eSports is insane. Literally bonkers. You, if you are a competent man for this kind of goes for some of my like kind of semi-pro man for watching right now, but I think it's worth listening to for everybody. Um, it, it does not hurt at all to reach out to either the college you're going to, the colleges in your area, say who you are, say what competitive accomplishments you have or don't have and say, Hey, I'd be really interested in joining your esports program. I was wondering if you guys have any opportunities, any kind of scholarships you guys might offer, et cetera, et cetera. I've worked with a ton of man players and have seen them get big offers. I myself have gotten scholarship offers right after I won my club championship. I had a full ride scholarship, almost a full ride scholarship. It was like minus like $1,000 um, to a small, a really small college, um, but it was still an opportunity to go get my a free education. Um, and I've seen people with very limited MCS success also get some money. Uh, so it's not a bad idea to just see. It can't hurt to send an email, dude. Seriously, I'm, I'm so serious. Especially if you're a college student right now and you play any sort of Madden. If you have not hit up your school about its esports opportunities, at the very least to see if you can get any kind of money from them, you are dumb. Yeah, I'm serious. And if you if you are listening to this and you still don't do it, you're an idiot. You're not even dumb anymore. You're a moron. Like, I'm so serious. It's, it's an opportunity. All you have to do is spend a little bit of your time and, and write an email or go meet somebody or call some. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the way I first got, got my scholarship offer, uh, this was back in summer of 2020, right around COVID. Um, it, I sent probably 50 emails out to every esports organization I could find in college sports. Um, and then I got one. Um, but I know it's actually more prevalent now. Uh, I have a lot of friends who, again, who have them, who have offers of some sort. Even if it's $100, $500, it's free money. I'm not necessarily free money, but you know what I'm saying. All right, uh, that's, that wraps up pretty much everything though. Uh, again, this is not stuff to just go, oh, I'm gonna go full time. It's just ideas of how you can make side money, okay? Again, you have to provide some sort of value. You have to grind a lot. If you wanna make money, especially in video games, online really, you have to put in a lot of work for very little money at first, typically. That's why I did. I, I bet if you, if you average everything out for my first couple of years, I'm so below minimum wage. <laughs> I'm so below minimum wage. It's insane. I, I, I thought about it before. I, I, I think I did the math a long time ago. It's like, it's hilariously like, there, it's so little. Um, but there's some grinding that comes into making money. Like there is. Uh, it's also a very lucrative field. Um, so this was my thoughts on it. Hey, you made it to the end of the video, meaning that you probably enjoyed it. If you did, check out this one right here. You're gonna like it even more. Or consider going to the description and check out my website, civil.gg. Learn how I play the game of John Madden football. All right, see you in the next one.